want to talk about really with you is uh, something you've got a little bit of knowledge in, uh, the art of assemblage. Uh, putting together parcels in Manhattan is the trickiest in the best of times. You've done it in all seasons and all cycles. Talk about how you sort of develop that expertise. Well, unfortunately, there's no courses that you can take on assembling a property. Um, it really starts in part with, um, do you have the right zoning? Because part of an assemblage relates to how much can you assemble, how high can you go, are there any height and setback um, issues? Um, the project that I'm currently doing, 45 East 22nd Street, I actually started by buying air rights. Didn't have a site. No land, no dirt at all. I started by buying the air rights from a co-op in the middle of the block, and once I had the air rights, I went to the guy next door and I said, um, we're in America, and I'm in a position to pay you more than anyone else in America. And he said to me, well, why is that? And I said, because I own the air rights from next door. So the next thing he did was he called the president of the co-op and he said, did you guys make a deal to buy, sell the air rights to Eichner? He, they said they did. Then I wound up buying his site. So now I have... So now you've got some dirt, some. Uh, just a, a fraction of what really took. One piece of dirt, which by the way had 21 tenants and a restaurant with a lease that had three years to go. Um, and then I started going up and down the block. Now, um, sometimes air rights resembles a bit the Game of Thrones. I am a big fan of the show, so I really need to know what that means. So what it means is that there's strategy involved. So um, the bulk of the air rights that I wanted were further down the block than the next building to the co-op. But I needed a connector. Could we say it's beyond the wall, would you say? It's definitely beyond the wall. Now, the way air rights work in New York, the way they're transferred is you merge zoning lots. But in the case of the building that was next door, which um, I referred to as Mr. Overbuilt. The reason I called them Mr. Overbuilt is because they actually were 2,000 feet more than was currently allowable under the zoning. So I paid them a million dollar connector fee to lose 2,000 feet. Why? I was connecting to 12,000, almost 13,000 feet, two buildings down. And this is, this is not a special district, this is kitty corner, there's not, there's not that much that you can do in terms of gymnastics or hopping across, correct? No, you're playing the Game of Thrones, um, in which uh, you have to go door to door. Uh, um, the, th the thing that was the most interesting was I did an off-site inclusionary housing deal, which brought me 65,000 feet of additional development rights. Um, so I cobbled together seven sets of properties plus off-site inclusionary housing to build a building that, if I was limited to simply the first property, would have been a 50,000 square foot building. And what are we talking right now? Well, how big is the building? 260,000 feet. And, and tell me, uh, this is something, the assemblage part of the game gets trickier as you go along. So the initial deal might be, might be pretty straightforward, but then people know what you're up to. Prices go up, demands go up. How do you deal with that? Well, one, you try to go very quickly. Two, you try to use intermediaries. Um, I, I will tell you, the last part of the deal, I called this guy for three months. I sent him emails, no response. So finally I said, screw this. I walked out of my office, I walked three blocks and I rang his front doorbell. And he lived on the- Personally, in the middle of the night or how did it go? Oh, it was the middle of the morning. Um, uh, I guess for reasons that are still not clear to me, he buzzed me up and I got to the third floor where he lived. I rang the buzzer and he said, who's that? And I said, you don't know me, my name is Bruce Eichner. He said, you're the guy who's been writing me, you're the guy who's been sending me emails. So I said, do you think perhaps you could open the door and we could chat? So he opened the door, he had no shoes or socks on, his pants were rolled up, he was obviously about to get dressed. So I said, do you, 
Mom, might I step into your apartment? No, my wife is getting dressed. So we spent the first half an hour at the door, wind blowing down the hallway. He must have been freezing because I was in my coat. Right. And it, that's how it started. But they say, to, you know, if you've got someone in an uncomfortable position, that's a good time to do a negotiation sometimes. Um, I don't know who was more uncomfortable, me or him, because we were standing in the middle of a hallway for half an hour. But at the end of the day, three months later, that was the last 15, 20,000 feet, and that added four stories to the building, or four full-through apartments, which is $80 million.